We cry freedom, freedom, with one voice we sing. We cry freedom, freedom, the freedom of our King. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. My name is Raleigh Hall, and I'm a songwriter. And I've written a song of freedom, and I'd like to share it with you. I've found in freedom, insecurity, inadequacy, embarrassment, and vulnerability. And then I found freedom to be the indwelling, indomitable will beyond the limitations of my senses, and I live. For some, it is a place to be sought. For others, it's found in a person of selected uniform. It is to be believed that freedom is only found when you get to heaven. I'm in the know that freedom is the character of God's kingdom. This freedom is accessed through the invincible grace of God through his son, Jesus Christ. It brings you to a land of hope, which I'm a citizen of and will forever be. I wrote of freedom's beauty in song with selected writers, Bill Humphrey, Linda Summers, Dennis Nelson, and with the spirit of every experience known to man in search of freedom's residence. Freedom is a song that came as a result of initially a BET aired program, The Book of Negroes. And in a nutshell, the story was about one particular person who uh, was sold into the Atlantic slave trade. Uh, she managed to have uh, many different uh, adventures. She was sold a number of times. But before she actually came with a number of people from different African nations, and they spoke many different languages. But she was literate and she was versed in many languages. One of the most moving scenes in the documentary, or actually it wasn't film, it wasn't a documentary, uh, was of the people on the ship crying out their names and the names of the people they belonged to and asking her to remember them, remember their names, remember the people they represented. Many of those people knew that they weren't going to live and that if they could plant this memory in this little girl, that she would carry it forward and by knowing their names and knowing the names of the people, that that would help them to continue. And it's very much like uh, a very common West African concept, which is that those who are not yet born, those who are here now, and those who have passed on, still are connected energetically. And that's why there is such a, a reverence for ancestors. That is why there's such a reverence for the continuity of life, that those babies who are yet to come are as important as those of us who are living, and those people who have gone on are as important as well. So what those people on the ship were doing 
was expressing this philosophy of continuity. The little girl was able to remember many of those names and part of her story was based on the fact that she accepted the mm. responsibility and was able to hold the names and the value behind those names. That thought is part mm. of what led me to think in terms of the value of freedom, what it means, what it has meant to us as people of African descent over these hundreds and hundreds of years, and what it means for us today. Well, Ra Raleigh and I have been writing for a number of years now, and um, we, uh, we have diff different writing styles. We, um, the songs that we've written have been come about in different ways. For this song, Freedom, we had an idea. We asked her to come out and do a session with him. Pretty much already had the melody, uh, what he wanted to, um, the melody of the song to be. Add, I added a bridge to it. But still, it was kind of like a faith walk in a way because I really didn't know everything that was entailed right. in the, uh, leading up to, to you writing the song. When I think about freedom, I think about being free from, being free from pain, free from bondage, free from limitations and lack. And I also think about freedom in terms of freedom to. So being able to be free to express oneself, being free to explore the universe, being free to succeed. So I think of freedom in those two ways often, being freedom, being free from something and being free to do something. The birthplace of freedom is discovered as you arrive from the journey of your captivity into freedom's abode. How it looks is lyrically inexpressible However, sharing this song are words of those who historically believed and presently walked in its character. Their rule of life shares the rhythm of what freedom looks like. Being free means to me is not having my hands or my feet in shackles and playing for the Lord on the drums. Freedom is actually more significant than what other people think, and even bigger than what I used to think. You see, freedom is not just getting out of jail. That's what I used to think. But freedom in the kingdom of God is actually getting out of jail and then realizing that your bank accounts are full. That's freedom. Because in the book of Ephesians, it says that you've been blessed in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. That's what I love about freedom. Express freedom where you live, and they'll know who you're living for. Then freedom will dance. Freedom will speak with one voice. Freedom will protect itself. Freedom loves all and sings from sea to shining sea. Share freedom, and it will become a world of good. Speak freedom, and peace will be heard. Sing freedom, healing will happen. Live freedom because it's global. Enjoy freedom, praise them. The idea of freedom in the song Freedom came to me when that movie just kept playing over and over in my head. And um, Raleigh and I talked about the movie a good deal. We talked about the importance of some of the scenes where our people were being marched from one place to the other and the, the loss of people along the way. Um, how difficult it was to be taken from a society that had rules and laws and art and dance and plenty and 
than to be taken to these horrible experiences and to still come away with some sense of humanity, some sense of dignity, some sense of still holding on to the kernel of that which makes us who we are, that, that creator spark. When Wally and I talked about uh, the notion of this song, uh, one of the things he, he asked me was, you know, Kush, just, just give me some, some, you know, put something down, put something down on a piece of paper for me. Uh, and as with many acts of creation, it took a minute for that to happen. I guess this is how it is with songwriting in general. Whatever you start out with, you don't know what you're going to come up with. And so there's always that feeling of, well, what if nothing comes? Creative, you know, in terms of creativity. Yeah, yeah. But when you get into the process, and then you, an idea comes and it leads to something else. Yeah. And then by the end of the session, you realize that something has, you know, has been brought forth that you couldn't have really imagined before. You know, so um, I mean, freedom, this song really represents that, that type of writing, you know, for, for me. And I didn't know what was, um, you know, I didn't, really didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and it was more like just going along step by step, listening, trying to add what I felt. Um, but the thing was, we, we did the first session in January, and Raleigh had one set of lyrics and, and one melody. And I added to it, I added a bridge to it. But a couple of weeks later, I came back to work on the song, and he gave me the sheet music. Another, I mean, he had another writer that, that was brought in. And what he had put together was very different from what we had initially done. Yeah, Bill Humphrey. Bill Humphrey, exactly. And so, in a way, it's, it was like starting over, but it really wasn't. It was really a progression. Of, yes. uh, just a, a progression of leading to the, to, the, uh, to the final product. And um, so we took Bill Humphrey's, um, Bill Humphrey's version worked with that, we started to incorporate what we had originally, and began to mix those two together, uh, which took the song to another level. Mm. It wasn't complete yet, but we were at another stage. Um, and a couple of weeks after that, I came over for a session, and we had a new set of lyrics. <laughs> no, but it is Raleigh. Raleigh emailed me. He emailed the song to me, and when I looked at it, the lyrics were totally different. And this was the point where Kush had gotten involved and she had made changes and added her lyrics. So you, what you were really just seeing is it's a gradual progression. And um, so now what you have now is in this finished product is really the contributions of Raleigh initiating a vision along with the contributions of Bill, Kush, and myself. Really uh, speaks to. I always think I always look at songwriting as a blessing. You know, it's a blessing to us to be able to create, and it's a blessing to be able to to present material that that will in turn bless others. And you never know how it's going to come. You never know how it's going to develop. And so that's the faith walk part. You know, you believe that God has entrusted you with this talent. Yes. Thank you. In taking the step step is either to write or to play or to just even just get involved that's the step of faith that God is going to provide what you need in order to, to get to that final point and you know it's really um, my hope is that, that, that this song presents liberty, freedom and just blesses people whatever state a person may find themselves in mm -hmm. you know that this is I heard Raleigh and Dennis playing the piano, the actual melody of the song Freedom. And the word that came to me was anthem, anthem. And I wasn't even exactly sure why that word came other than that it said the music sounded so important. It sounded as if it if it was a, a piece 
that was trying to capture the significance of a people and their journey. The word anthem meant for me then, without really looking it up, that there was something powerful and purposeful in this melody. It wasn't just a nice sound, although it was that, but it was also something, it was almost as if the energy of those people who Raleigh and I had been thinking about, talking about for weeks, infused that melody. It just felt like there was more to it than notes being played, that there was an energy, an energy that came from the ancestors that was captured in that melody. I then was in some way called on to try to add to that creation through words. And I started just noodling around on a piece of paper, what, what kinds of thoughts came to me. I, I thought about remembering the journey. I thought about the fact that these people still had humanity in spite of all that had been done. I thought about their survival um, in spite of all that had been done and that what kept them going was a combination of things, hope and love and um, a sense of knowing that they were part of that continuity that I mentioned earlier knowing that even though they had been broken apart, that there were still sparks or threads that held them together, rather threads than sparks. There were threads that connected them because they were people going through this same unbelievable Atlantic slave trade experience. What eventually emerged was the song that's called Freedom. One of the things about songwriting is that um, there's no particular science, though there is format and structure. There's no science in the form of writing. And uh, I would, let me just backpedal a minute. There is a science, there's a chemistry within those that you collaborate with. And that's the science within songwriting. Uh, yet with this particular song, I wanted to, I chose the people that I did to help write this song because they have a sense of liberty in bondage, that they have history and not just history of yesterday, but history of centuries and Dennis has a lot of musical history about those who have gone on, and then the whole um, plight of why those have gone on to going up in, to you know find freedom. And I did not want to feed any of the writers about what this song was about because I wanted them to hear it direct from the spirit in which it was written. And so I didn't give them a whole lot of history. Uh, I was looking to feel their experience based on the, the music, the chord structure, the um, lyrical content, and just hear what their experience of freedom was interpreted through those events in our history of black African-American culture um, that stands now. So uh, that, that's, that's the importance that we hear. And here at Homeworks Music Group, our motto, our theme is here just to make music. And uh, that's what we do when we get together. Uh, we hear it, it's, it's direct, it's like having an IV. You know, when we surround each other in the presence of whether it be melody, whether it be instruments, it happens. And that's a certain.
because there's so many of us that's able to feed off of each other. Um, I'll just bring up at this time, when uh, I was writing the verses, I had been calling Bill Humphrey for maybe like a month. I told him the idea back in October. Our first meeting was in January. January. However, I'd been working on the song since July of last year, just through uh, a commercial that I saw. <laughs> and I don't know if I should go here now. However, we're here. So uh, I originated the song from a commercial that I saw. And the commercial was talking about liberty and freedom. It was one of those channel for commercials between like the CMAs or the Grammys, something like that. And it showed, um, um, what do you call it? A drum and bugle corps type of band. Mm -hmm. And there was a voiceover over the commercial. And the voiceover uh, gentleman that was speaking was saying, well, this is the sound of the revolution. As they were hitting, you didn't hear any music. However, you heard, or you saw, or I saw the rhythm they were playing on the snares and the drums that they were walking and marching with. Um, that's another analogy of this song. They were marching to the rhythm. Mm -hmm. And when he said, this is the sound of the revolution, and I keyed in on the, the rhythm of the drum, I said, wow, that's the sound of revolution. And I picked up and something just clicked in me. And that's why you hear in the, in the bridge, um, and well, yeah, we sing God's revolution, revolution. Out right, depths. out of the depths of our soul. And sometimes we're playing to a, a rhythm in life that we don't know how it's inspired other than it's God inspired, it's divinely connected. And um, so that's how the song started. Along with the you know civil rights movement and in Mandela's death, he was able to connect so many other people and so many other nations that would not have come together otherwise. So that was something that just struck me in a most, you know, dynamic way and I just had to follow this this thing about freedom how we can find freedom in each other for the things that we're holding against each other things that we are judging each other we can find freedom in just pursuing an act of love or an act of kindness what greater manner of uh, behavior is an act of kindness than to show brotherly love one to another so that's the most powerful thing um, you know so we heard, we heard directly from the divine presence of God as we wrote this. And we didn't know what was happening, you know. Um, having called Bill repeatedly for a month, and then in October, and then around December, he was like, Raleigh, okay, I, I'm just been so busy, so busy, but I got something. And he's, he just said, listen, can you just listen for a minute over the phone? So he got behind his keyboard. I listened over the phone. And I was like, wow. And he sung it back to me. He said, wow, I like that. Let's do that. And the rest is history. And so Bill contributed to that whole verse bridge uh, section of the song. And it just took us to another height of what freedom was all about in relationship to this song. The song Freedom has to do with how we were able, as the old folks used to say, how I got over. How did I get over? What was it? Um, part of it was a song. Part of how we got over was that we cried out for freedom. We cried out out to survive. We cried out our names. We cried out our desire to still keep putting one foot in front of the other, regardless of what else was happening. And in some ways, that's what we're doing today. In spite of all the stuff that's happening to us, 
specifically directed at us. I want to make that clear. This is not a multicultural thing I'm talking about right now. This is a specific intentions directed at us that are not for our good, but still we survive. It's a little bit like that uh, line in Maya Angelou's pro, uh, poem, And Still I Rise. So crying out freedom allows that spirit within us of overcoming to rise. We overcome these circumstances and situations that, that, that come at us. We overcome. And we overcome because we cry out for freedom. We overcome because we stay aware in some deep place of our consciousness that the intention of the Creator is not that we be destroyed. That is not the divine plan for our people. No matter what is happening now, no matter what happened then, that was never the intention. And so in this song of freedom, we sing about hope, we sing about the power of love, we sing about how even though we may not know what's next, we know that our divinity, that which created us, is somehow still with us, somehow still keeping us from being destroyed. And so we sing about liberty, we sing about victory, we sing about birth. Many of the words in the song Freedom come directly from a place of creation that is beyond the words, if that makes sense. Uh, the words themselves have an energy, they have a power, they have a meaning. When connected to the melody, they then have a life. And in some ways, what I was privileged to do was to help midwife this song, uh, to help bring it into this dimension from that place of creation. And that's a great privilege. That's, that's a great privilege. And I feel blessed to have been a part of that process. I look forward to the way in which this new living entity will grow. How will it grow? How will it uh, bless others? How will it add to the good that is in the world? I am I'm just so looking forward to see what that's going to be like. And I'm grateful to have had this opportunity to express some of how this creating, pro, creation process happened with me and for me. I am just thrilled to have had this chance to do this. And that's part of being graced and being oh so grateful. I think the whole concept of liberty, freedom too, is it's, you, can, you can look at it individually, you can look at it spiritually, and then like you were saying, you can look at it in terms of the, the, the struggle for freedom that we've, that we've had to encounter throughout our history, both in Africa and, and here in America. And um, one of the uh, comments that, that Kush made earlier Freedom representing freedom from, and mm. freedom moving to. to mm -hmm. And when you look at it musically, with, with that percussion, that mm. drive into the Magaz Revolution, and uh, and that um, that move, that move, that march towards freedom. Yes. You know that it's it's not even uh, it's we cry freedom, but it's more like it's like an affirmation that we are free. Ooh, wow. You know, we cry freedom, but it's not like we're pleading for freedom. We're affirming that we are free. And, uh, yeah. Praise so. That's odd. That's a revelation right there. That's the truth. Yeah. Because we know what freedom is, we cry it. Right. right. And it comes from the depths of our soul. And it's, and it's collective as well as individual. Yeah. With the spirit of the Lord, is, there's liberty. So we're free. Hallelujah. Already. Right. Spiritually and also as a people. So it's, uh, I'm alive.
lot of levels. But the song has meaning. I mean, uh, in songwriting, you get um, you, you tend to get an inspiration from you know different places, words that are spoken. You know, uh, one of the things with this song is that we we were inspired by a sermon that was preached at Riverside Church uh, in December, right before Christmas. Uh, the guest minister was a woman named Tracy Blackman, and she spoke on the topic of, of freedom. And during her sermon, she referenced the song, My Sweet Honey in the Rock, or We Who Believe in Freedom shall not, Cannot Rest Until It Comes. That phrase, that song, and that, that phrase was, was an inspiration in taking this song and in, in this song transform because when it was written when it was first written it was I think lyrically to me it, it had more of a hymn like uh, mm -hmm. quality more personal uh, personal feel to it and eventually it was transformed to transform into something that was more universal uh, uh, lyrically and um, that, uh, the song by Sweet Honey the Rock helped to contribute to that she uh made such an emphasis that unless we have freedom, we won't rest. And so many times, as we've seen over the centuries, as slaves, we have not rested until we've come to our place, whether it was getting the next generation to their place. Mm -hmm whether it was attaining that land that you know, our grandfathers and you know, our forefathers had said, get to that land, um, or whether it was just you know, getting to a place in a relationship where you were in unfamiliar waters and somehow you reached a unity in a neutral place where you were able to um, have a cohesive relationship, or even if you spoke different language, there was a freedom in the language where you could communicate to, to say, we can coexist. And that's what freedom is. It's coexisting. It's from the inside out. So um, that, that was powerful. And so I found rest after we finished writing the song. There was so many... Yeah, some resolve, right? Because there were so many drafts and so many, you know, throw this out and scrape that off. And um, I think Kush brought it to, like, its person. Yes. You know, when she characterized the, the nature of the song and uh, what it did for um, her internally. And she was able to retrieve even some ancestral things because right there in the chorus bridge, um, I wrote about the uh, cheers of victory from sea to shining sea, oceans of those going on, share the, the unsung song, and that's about that whole boat ride in the and the uh, Armistead era, you know, when the slaves were coming over in the boat and uh, being traded. Yeah. The whole, the whole spiritual connection, and uh, I think the uh, statement that she made, the point she made, that um, we are connected with what came before, and we're also connected with what's what's coming after, yeah. you know, and, wow. and, and uh, you know, just to the um, that our ancestors were always aware of that. It's powerful. It's powerful. Sometimes you just kind of get speechless. Um, it, it, this was a plight from 2014, February 2014, to February 2015. Uh, worshiping at New Life Fellowship Church, I felt the inspiration through Bill Humphrey, actually. He put a presentation together for um, the February 2013 um, Black History Month program and that inspired me along with Red Sevilla who did the 2014. So I, within myself, said, God, I would like to write a song for Black History Month next year. Now, little did I know that they would even accept it, 
but I pursued it from that time on. And believe it or not, over the months that were passing, Pastor Rich and Pete must have preached about freedom 157 times. I stopped at 157 <laughs> because it was just so prevalent and everything was, was leading to the freedom that we have in Christ. And it just began to indwell me and then that freedom began to exude from me. And this is what, what we're receiving and the many others that contributed to the many other events and experiences that contribute to all of the writers have made it what it is. It's birthed a new freedom and we hope to do the same in you that when you hear the song, it's birthing freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we didn't actually do the song in February uh, because Black History Month was, was tight and we were really just finishing up the song uh, in January. Yeah. yeah we, still, we still hadn't finished it. Yeah, we still hadn't finished it up until maybe two weeks um, into February. So I got a call from Kate Song, who is the musical director um, over the New Life Fellowship ministry, music ministry. And she emailed me and she said, Hey, Raw, we won't... We, weren't able to do it in February, but let's, you know, revisit it. And I was like, sure. And she emailed me back. She said, hey, can we do the song um, March 22nd, I believe it was. Yep, fourth Sunday. Yeah, the fourth Sunday. And uh, I was like, sure, that would be great. And so be it. I mean, all of that which I experienced from that time in February 2014 to February 2015 was now birthed at New Life Fellowship. And for that, I give praise. Um, and then the phenomenal response that I've had uh, from people stopping me in church and just thanking God for what they received. I had someone in the military uh, speak to me after one of the services, having heard the song, and shared how that song freed him up in so many ways, um, just from the experiences that he had in the service, and how, you know, it had him reminisce, and then it brought him back home to where he can think clear and, and find freedom in his family and in Christ and, and his faith. So um, that was powerful. I didn't even think of that in that way, you know. Um, there's, there's just so much more that I could go on and share, but nothing better than for you to share the freedom that you're experiencing in the song with someone else. That would make our hearts more, most glad and honor the Father in which brought us that freedom. This is Raleigh Hall and Dennis Nelson. Kush, we love you. Bill Humphrey, thank you so much for all of what you've uh, done musically to help Hallmark's music bring this dream to fruition. Um, we thank you, and we love you, and we love all of you, and we send you our freedom. Praise him. Praise him. Right now, we're in the midst of production, recording, freedom. We got Lino Gomez on the bass, Dennis Nelson on the keys. Christopher on the drum kit, and we're doing our thing. This is a global thing, and we believe right now in this moment, from sea to shining sea, you too will receive freedom. So check us out. Stay tuned. Praise you cry freedom, freedom. With one voice we sing, we cry freedom, freedom, the freedom of our King.